Now let's talk about some applications of a quadratic function. These applications will come from an observation we can make about the x-intercepts. So let's talk about that. So if we're trying to find the x-intercepts of a function, or an equation for that matter, we want to know what values make the y values 0. That is, what, where does the graph cross the x-axis? We can find that by saying y equaling 0 and solving this equation for x. And the equation we get is a quadratic equation. So we can try to factor in and uh, solve this, or we know that we can always solve it by using our quadratic formula. x equals negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2a. And notice if we divide both terms on top by 2a, this is negative b divided by 2a plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all divided by 2a. And from this, we can see that the, the two x-intercepts we have are the same distance away of, or same distance away from negative b over 2a. So this value in the middle must be negative b over 2a, because then we go plus a certain value distance to get one x-intercept and minus a certain distance to get the other x-intercept. The significance of this is that that line corresponds exactly to the x-intercept of our vertex. So we get this cute little theorem that says that a parabola has a vertex with x-coordinate equaling negative b over 2a. Or the way I remember this is this is just the start of the quadratic formula. It's negative b over 2a. So you can uh, mumble the, the plus or minus stuff and just remember that x equals negative b over 2a. Plug in that value into our function gives us the y value, so this point up here, and that's exactly the y coordinate of our vertex. So this is a quick and way to find the x and y coordinate of a vertex. And moreover, the y value we know is the minimum value, the smallest value of the function, if our parabola opens up, if it has a minimum value, right, think of the graph, it has a minimum value at that smallest place, and that occurs if a is positive, and it's the maximum value, it's the biggest value, the biggest y value, if the parabola opens down or if a is negative. So let's see some examples. So before we do this example, please correct the, the function. Let's consider instead of the one that's written down, let's consider 2x squared plus 4x plus 1, let's change that plus here to a minus. So 2x squared plus 4x minus 1. Using our formula from earlier, we said that a vertex will be located at x equals negative b over 2a. In this case, b is the number in front of the x, so 4. a is the number in front of the x squared, so 2. So this is located at negative 4 over 4, negative 1. That's the x-coordinate of our vertex. The y-coordinate is found by taking negative 1 and plugging it into our function. So 2 times negative 1 squared plus 4 times negative 1 minus 1. So 2 minus 4 minus 1, negative 3. So our vertex must be at negative 1, negative 3. So we didn't have to complete the square. We use our nice little formula. And then because a is positive, we know we, our parabola is going to open up. And its minimum value is going to be right at that vertex. And the smallest value of the function is going to be negative 3, which is the value when x is is negative 1. So the minimum value of f is negative 3. And because they think of the graph here, the range is going to start, the large, smallest value of y is going to start this negative 3 value and go up because our parabola opens up. Let's try this problem. In this case, we're given a lot of information about a quadratic function. We're, we're, said, we're told that a manufacturer of light bulbs has an hourly production cost of 800 minus 10x plus 1 fourth x squared, where x is the number of bulbs being produced in an hour. And we're asked how many light bulbs should be produced to yield a minimum cost. So how many light bulbs? That's our x. So find x when cost is minimum. And our cost is this quadratic function. Now, why should it have a minimum? 
We know this function has a minimum because a is positive. The number in front of the x squared is positive, which means our parabola is going to open up. It's going to have a minimum value, and that value is going to be located at the vertex. The x coordinate of that vertex is found by our formula, negative b over 2a. In this case, b is negative 10, a is 1 fourth, and so this becomes 20 divided by, oh, sorry, 20, 10 divided by a half. 10 divided by a half is the same thing as 10 multiplied by the reciprocal of 1 half, or 10 times 2, so 20. Now we have to make sure that by using this formula that we didn't miss anything, so if we go back and read the problem, it's asking us to find the number of light bulbs needed to minimize the cost. X is representing the number of light bulbs, so X equals 20 light bulbs is our answer. If instead this problem asks us to find what is the minimum cost, then we plug the 20 into our function for inf to replace our X's with 20 and calculate what C of 20 would be. That would be the cost. Let's consider another problem. Here we're, we're told that a rancher uses 500 yards of fence to build a rectangular corral along the river for his pet. What's the largest area that the corral can have? So here's a picture. We have a, uh, the river running by, we have our pig in the middle, and we're trying to build a fence around it. And so we want to know how large a, a fence area we can build. The area and then how much fence we use depend on the lengths of the sides of the corral. So let's give those some names. So let's call this distance on top x. And let's use the sides as y. So the amount of fence we're going to use in total would be the, the fence on the left of the corral. That's distance y. Plus the fence on top. That's a distance x. Plus the fence down below. Plus another y. And we're going to assume it's open here along the river. So we have 1y plus 1x plus 1 more y. And that has to total the number of fits we have, which is 500. So we have x plus 2y equals 500. But that just gives us the relationship between the sides. We want to know which of these sizes, maybe a really narrow fence, or maybe a really wide fence, will be good for our pig. And so we want to find the largest area. So largest should mean, should remind you of, ah, we want to find a maximum, a maximum area. So let's talk about what defines our area. Area, in this case, is a, the area of a rectangle. Its area is length times width, x times y. Because this depends on x's and y's, we're going to use our relationship above to replace one of our variables. This is easiest to do by solving for x. So x is 500 minus 2y, which means that our area is the same thing as 500 minus 2y times y. Now area is just a function of y alone. And more specifically, notice what type of function it is. If we distribute the y to both terms, this is 500y minus 2y squared, or negative 2y squared plus 500y. That's a quadratic function, which means it, it'll have a vertex. Its graph is going to be a parabola. And because a is negative, a is negative 2, it's a parabola that opens downwards. And opening downwards means that it'll have a largest value at the vertex. The location of that vertex will happen when y, our input, is negative b over 2a. So this becomes, uh, let's see, negative b. There's b right there in front of the y. So negative 500 over 2 times a, which is negative 2. So we get negative 500 over negative 4, which is, let's see, I think that would be 125. Now let's make sure we can answer a question. That, that that's the length of our side, so that'd be yards, 125 yards. What this problem is asking for, if we go back up and look, is the largest area, not the dimensions of our 
of our fence, but the largest area. And so to find the area, we go back to our area function. Here's our area function that tells us how to calculate area if we know what y is. And now we do know what y is, so we're going to take this y value and we're going to plug it into our function. So the area is going to be 500 minus 2 times 125 times 125. And that's going to be in yards squared.